Uh, please welcome to the show, Tammy Stronach. There you go. <laughs> hey, Tammy, how are you? <laughs> Hi. I'm so in my mind now of trying to pronounce it in Gallic. Gallic. Mm -hmm. All right, there you go. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we've been wanting to talk to you since, well, our, our podcast is, is only about two years old, but we've been wanting to talk to you most since we read in, uh, uh, what was it, Variety, July, or maybe it was Variety or Deadline, in July of last year, learning that not only were you returning to film, but that I was, you were returning to film to bring uh, the 1980s fantasy genre sort of back to life in a way that only we experienced as kids growing up in that era. And that was super exciting to us. And Thank so, you. It's so hard. That's so hard. It's so great to talk to folks who were part of the 80s pop culture, but to find someone who also is now trying to bring it to a new generation, that's, you know, thrilling. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I was, you know, in the Neverending Story, obviously, but I was also just sure. an 80s kid that grew yeah. up on E.T. <laughs> and on all of those movies, Labyrinth, you know, The Dark Crystal. Like, I was a huge, huge fan of all that stuff. And I think when I had my daughter and I was trying to um, think about what kind of stories I want to share with her and what kind of stories moved me when I was a kid. Yep. I started to sort of feel like those 80s stories had a lot of heart in them. Sure. And um, and I kind of missed the sensibility of some of those films. And mm -hmm. so um, and then I went to Comic Cons, which was kind of a new experience for me. <laughs> I really went just to see, meet Noah, like I got lured into it and I was like, oh, I haven't seen him in so long. It'd be so nice to have coffee with him. You know what, I'll go. I don't know what this Comic-Con thing is. And then in fact, it was incredibly moving and I was so shocked by the number of people for whom um, sort of movies and fantasy became this launching pad for their own creativity and this kind of Commute, community and I, it was it really like opened a whole world for me and and then everyone was like when are you going to come back to film and when are you going to do something and then I came home and I told my husband and he's like well when are we and I was like well <laughs> what <laughs> and so then the seeds got planted and we started um thinking about how we might do it and then it was crazy it just like snowballed from there it was like it all started just happening all like I we were just like trying to catch up to the ball at that point right. wow that's exciting. so you said you weren't you're an 80s kid obviously and loved those films of the 80s do you find that having been in one of those films that we enjoyed did it change how you may have enjoyed them having been behind the curtain or behind the camera so to speak no, no. <laughs> you're still just a kid I mean, yeah when I watch a film I'm just just like everybody else I just fall into the story and um and I think I think being in the never ending story did make me sort of understand that a life in the arts is possible hmm. and that there's something really beautiful that can happen when a team of artists are working together kind of for a common goal and that I felt really at home in an environment where such a tangible goal, like everyone's just working together for this one tangible goal. And it sort of mm. brings out the best in people. Right. And that as a little kid, I was like, I want to be around that. And obviously for me, that manifested in dance and in live theater in New York, but it was definitely the never ending story in that sort of environment that made it real for me. Like, Oh, this is pursuable, or this mm. is, this is something that, you know, you could do with your life. Cause my parents were academics. Like that wasn't a door that I necessarily knew existed. So I think I'm super grateful for that experience. Cause it sort of mm, did what the film tells you to do, which is yeah. like, if you really, <laughs> dream about something you can go ahead and like build that for yourself you know so prior to the film then uh so knowing that you pursued dance and you were working in theater and a number of other things s creatively since the film prior to the film what were your artistic interests was it more in dance or acting or did you have any i was really equally invested in acting and in in dancing and i was totally obsessed i mean i would take the bus uh 
I had my little quarter and I'd go, you know, to school, like from school to my ballet studio and I danced for four hours. And then I carpooled on the weekends to San Francisco to the like musical theater school. And I took acting classes there. And yeah, I mean, I was completely um, immersed. Now you had mentioned, you know, when you, part of your inspiration for now working on the film, a film of your own was the birth of your daughter and, you know, looking for opportunities to, I guess, experiences to share with her that might be similar to yours in the 1980s. Is the never ending story a film that you shared with her in that way? I did. Yeah, of yeah. course. And <laughs> I was really, really worried about sharing it with her because she is very invested in films and like, the first time I took her to like a Pixar film, which I absolutely love Pixar films. Sure. She just like ran out of the theater screaming like all the way up the aisle. Like, ah! Where'd you go? You know? um, <laughs> so I was like, well, I really don't want to like put the never ending story on and have her go, ah! Where is she? You know? <laughs> so I was like, okay, I have to like wait till she's old enough because there's Artex and there's, sure. you know, Mark <laughs> and, um, so, um, so I waited until she was nine. I think that's right. Maybe it was eight. Mm. No, I'm sorry. Everything's getting muddy, but waited <laughs> till I felt that it was long enough for her to just be ready for it. And, uh, and it was really, really fun. She, she loved it and she stayed in the room and didn't scream. So that's great. Right. <laughs> did, uh, did you tell her ahead of time you were in it or did you just let her watch it without telling her? Oh, she, she, she knew that I was in it because, um, because, uh, well, it was funny, you know, I was invited to go to Berlin to this red carpet event. They were doing a show there and for reasons I still don't entirely understand, but I'm very, very grateful for, they just wanted me to attend the show and see it. Um, so in Berlin, the never ending story was kind of a, a bigger deal than in the States and in the States sure. um, was a university professor and I had my dance company and, she sort of knew me as a director in New York in that circle. And then when we went to Berlin, we we're like on the carpet and everyone's talking about every story. And she's like, mom, was this film like a big deal or something? <laughs> <laughs> she was like, why is everybody, why is everybody making this? Show? Wasn't this like a thousand years ago? And I'm like, it was a thousand years ago. <laughs> but I'm a thousand years old. And for those of us in that category, they liked yeah. it, you know? <laughs> so at that point, she kind of, was like, oh, so, you know, so yeah, she knew about it. She knew about it. 